So the lead code problem we are going to solve now is called walls and gates. We can see that this uh, UI looks slightly bit different than tip our typical lead code problems and that is because this is actually a very popular lead code premium problem. So that's why I took this uh, screenshot from a website called leadcode.ca. So whoever is operating that, thank you so much. Now let's understand the problem statement. We are given an M cross N 2D grid that is initialized with three possible values first possible value is minus one so minus one defines that there is a wall or an obstacle that we cannot cross over next value is zero zero defines that there is a gate and third value is an inf so inf is a very large number basically and uh, if we are given this very large number that defines that the given room is empty so basically we are given three distinct values one value defines that on that particular cell position there could be a wall uh, or it could be a gate or it could be an empty room so for the rest of this problem let's just try to use only these three values so it would make sense for us to understand okay now we need to fill each empty room so each cell that contains the value e with the distance to its nearest gate so this is the gate that we are given we need to calculate the distance from every single empty room to its ne subsequent nearest gate and if it is impossible to reach a gate then it should be filled with an infinite val value or which means like an empty room so let's try to understand this with an example basically we are going to be given a grid like this that contains three different values uh, infinity minus one and zero but the thing is i have presented them slightly nicely uh, over here so let's try to understand and figure out that what does this problem statement is actually asking us to solve so we can see that there are a bunch of different empty rooms that are currently given to us and we are only given two different gates that these empty rooms can try to reach to plus uh, for some empty rooms we actually have walls that are coming in between so we will have to ignore those walls and try to figure out that what is the best way to reach to those particular gates so let's just create an empty uh, uh, like empty M cross N grid and we will try to fill out these values. So we can see that for this very first position, this one is an empty room. So what are the closest gate to this empty room? One closest gate is located over here. If we calculate the distance, this is actually three cells away. So in this case, uh, one option is that we can fill value 3 over here or if we have to calculate the distance between second gate it looks like this is very close this see feels like that this is only two steps away but that is not the real case why because there is a wall in between so we cannot cross the wall so if we have to reach to this particular gate we will have to go down this path and then this path and then this path so that actually makes the total distance as 4 but the thing is we need to calculate the shortest distance so over here shortest distance to the gate is going to be value number three same way shortest distance over here is actually going to be this gate that is this value number two shortest distance so distance over here is once again this gate and that is this value number one now this value is already gate so we can define it as zero or uh, let me just mark it as gate uh, for our understanding now at this particular position the closest gate is uh, actually this one and this is only two steps away so we can actually mark value 2 over here same way this is only one step away through this gate same way this is also one step away through this gate same way this is 2 and this is 3 and this one is actually four steps away from the gate and that path is actually going to be this one so this is going to be 4 for all the other ones the walls are always going to remain the walls so we can simply mark the walls as it is and the gate is going to be as as gate and this is what we need to return as part of the answer uh, now for some reason let's try to understand that suppose uh, this value is also a wall let's say uh, that over here uh, let's say that this value is also a wall okay just for the understanding purpose so then now at this position we have no way to reach to a gate because both adjacent doors contains a wall so in this case we are still going to make uh, put this as an infinite value or mark it as an empty cell so just for our understanding uh, okay so let's break down the problem in sub task and we will try to calculate the result number one thing we need to check is that distance of any particular cell from the gate this is the number one thing second condition we have is that if there is a wall we cannot cross so we cannot go 
to the wall we do we should not consider if there is an empty room we will try to find that how many steps it take from empty room to reach to the gate or from gate to reach to the empty room so now what the approach i'm suggesting is that if we try to calculate at every single gate that uh, or sorry every single empty room that where is the closest gate and if we try to find this one this problem can get like slightly more expensive why because remember that or this gate location we will have to do like either a bfs operation or a dfs operation and we need to keep on iterating over uh, of every single possible neighbors in order to calculate that where does the nearest uh, uh nearest gate lies and it could take potentially big o of like m cross n times for every single grid in order to find both the gates in the worst case scenario so this problem can become like m cross n multiplied by m cross n that is going to be very expensive problem so rather than finding out the from like distance from empty room and searching for the gates it would make much more sense that from any particular gate we can start iterating over and branching out in like a uh, different traversal fashion and try to find the empty rooms and for each traversal that we make we simply have to do one uh, iteration because uh, we know that it is one step further from the gate in order to reach to that particular empty room so what the approach i am suggesting is that uh, first of all we simply iterate over the given input array and try or sorry given input matrix and try to mark all the positions that contains gate we identified that this contains gate now from this gate we start traversing in all the possible directions until we exhaust every single possibility uh, of finding an empty room for the from any particular gate that is option that is number one thing second thing is that we also take care or take into the consideration that if i have to reach to any particular uh, any particular empty room how many hops did i had to take in order to reach to that empty room also it could be possible that some other gate can also reach to same particular empty room then we will try to put the value that contains like the lower value compared to the current value we have as part of the empty room so let me explain the solution then it would make sense now the question is let's say that we identify that these two are the gate positions we know we, where we are we want to iterate from but the question is how we are we going to iterate uh, are we going to use depth first search or breadth first search so logic is quite straightforward since in this case we will have to calculate how many hops it take to reach to any particular location we don't want to do the backtrack and keep on going in just one direction we actually wants to branch out in each of the directions so logically it would make more sense to use breadth first search in order to calculate our result so if we have to use breadth first search we will actually have to use a cube in order to generate the result so idea is we are going to initialize a cube in the cube we are going to mark all the positions that contains the current gate values then we from this particular gate value we will keep on iterating over until the next element and all of its neighbors that we are able to reach that are currently empty rooms we would mark them to the gate as well and we would try to update the value of those empty rooms by one plus and the moment we do the next iteration we will add one more value the moment we do the next iteration we will do one more value so let's say that we start our iteration from this value so currently this one is a gate okay these are all the walls that we cannot use or we cannot go, go over so let's try to start populating our array using this gate value and see that how is the result we get during the first iteration we are going to go down this path so we know that for both of them the distance is going to be 1 1 and currently remember the distance is infinite so we are always trying to put the smaller distance on the place of the gate next is uh next from here we cannot go anywhere because this is a wall we already visited this node and uh so there are no other ways to go but from here we still have two ways to go down so let's mark the values for both of them so this is going to be two this is going to be two once again from this two we have one more way to go so this is going to be three and from three we have one more way to go this is going to be four that's it we exhausted all the possibilities down this path but over here we still have more paths that we haven't traversed over so this is going to be three then this is going to be four this is also going to be four then this is going to be five so or sorry no this 
it has to be a gate value so we are not going to do anything so now we exhausted all the possibility as the, at this gate once again we are going to repeat the same progress process from this gate and try to fill in the lower value so if we branch out this value actually becomes one because this value is and one is less than four so we are going to put one over here then this value becomes two because two is less than the current value we have so this becomes two then this value becomes three because this value is uh, actually smaller than this one so we can mark this as three now from this two if we have to go this way this becomes three but we already have a two which is already a smaller value so it makes no sense for us to go down to this path from this three we cannot go anywhere else so that's it now this state actually contains every single possible like distance of empty room to the gate that we have been able to identify it. and all we had to do is was to use a breadth first search starting at the gate and keeping track of all the graph related principles so basically keeping track of all the visited nodes and updating the value from the current position uh, or every single new BFS we make we simply have to add value by one and then we need to branch out in all four directions where the given gate is a uh, so, sorry the given cell value is not a gate and it's not a wall which means any place that is an empty room we need to calculate that what is the distance from a gate and if we do this for all the gates eventually we would left with what is desired from us that we can return so if we have to understand the time and space complexity in this case the time complexity is going to be big o of m multiplied by n but we will have to do this by the number of gates that are present and if we see space complexity well we will have to use a q in order to do that and q depends on the number of elements so it is also going to be big o of m multiplied by n and this is what we need to return this is a pretty good time and space complexity and congratulations you just learned an awesome lead code problem uh, that is a premium problem and you don't, didn't have to pay for the lead code premium so anyways now let's quickly see the coding solution so this is going to be the solution and uh, I cannot run this in uh, lead code because this is a premium problem but I would still paste the solution in our github repository so you can check it out from there. So we have our infinite marked as a very large number then we are creating a static uh, position called direction to iterate over all four directions basically this will help us uh, during our breadth for search calls now this one is the main method the walls and gate method where we are given the rooms as part of the input we first check for an edge case that if the given rooms are null we can return if that is not the case we define the values of m and n then we also initialize a new queue which we are going to use to do a breadth first search then we are going to find all the gates that are currently present inside our given array by using two for loops and uh, we are checking for the value that is equal to zero after that we are simply going to do a bfs for every single gate where we are checking that uh, for this particular gate position what are all the four directions that we can explore into for each of the four directions we are going to check that number one we are not going out of bounds and number two if the given value of room that we are reaching toward the cell is actually infinite then we are simply going to update the value of the distance and uh, in the end we can simply add that value to our queue as well to keep on updating the distance so basically we are going to be storing like the smallest distance possible from every single gate and this is what we need to return uh, in the end so this solution would work as expected and now let's uh, I won't be able to run it but you will be able to find the solution at my github repository so feel free to check it out from there thank you